whether Ed was facing the Chargers, Chiefs, or Rams during their Super Bowl winning ride, the Patriots shaped and remolded their defense every week to take down each of those potent defenses. It was an impressive display. Their biggest chameleon act came in the Super Bowl against the Rams. Cornerback Jonathan Jones, who effectively marked Tyreek Hill in the Chiefs game, morphed into a safety. Dota Hightower, who had been an on-the-ball linebacker, played off the ball. Kyle Van Noy. Well, forget putting a label on him. The linebacker was everywhere, inside, outside, he lined up all over the field. Put an X on there, and I'll do whatever you need to do. That's what they did with me this year. That's what they did with everybody, Van Noy told NFL Network in a recent interview. There was just things we did in the Super Bowl game plan, things we hadn't done all year. We kept moving pieces around to have them keep guessing, Atlanta, Georgia. February 3rd, Kyle Van Noy, 53, and Donda Hightower, 54, of the New England Patriots celebrate after sacking Jared Goff, 16, of the Los Angeles Rams during the third quarter of Super Bowl 53 at Mercedes-Benz Stadium on February 3, 2019 in Atlanta, Georgia. Staff photo by Nancy Lane, media use group, Boston Herald, Van Noy predicted this change on the fly mentality, with players adopting multiple roles, would be the defense of the future. With the NFL being a copycat league, there's certainly proof it worked for the Patriots. What's interesting is no one saw it coming. No one thought their defense would lead this victory. But the versatile group, with Bill Belichick and Brian Flores pulling the strings, kept three of the NFL's best defenses at bay en route to championship No. 6. But the defense of the future? That's just a little hard to fathom. Some teams attempt to change up from week to week, like the Patriots, and not marry themselves to one scheme all year. However, making the transitions from week to week between the coaching involved, the type of personnel needed, along with the execution, is a killer. It's not the easiest task to pull off. That's why what the Patriots did from a defensive standpoint was so compelling, and so special. I think Bill has always done a great job with Nick Casario, of putting together a roster of guys that can do more than one thing. Look at the secondary and the linebackers. Everybody has a lot of roles, said Texans coach Bill O'Brien, who was at the NFL's scouting combine. A lot of teams try to do that. But then it's trying to get those players to execute the different roles at a high level from week to week. One day the guy's a safety, the next week he's a corner, one time he's a nickelback, the next week, he's a safety. That's what they do such a great job of. That's what's so hard to go against. Bill's always done a great job of that. I think we all try to bring in versatile guys. We try to do that in Houston and use them in different ways. Patriots just did such a great job of that this year, former Patriots linebacker Mike Rabel, now the head coach of the Texans, understands what's involved. He did it, as a player. He was one of those versatile players Belichick loved when he was a part of three Super Bowl winning teams that started the amazing run for the Patriots. Now, as a coach, Rabel tries to recognize players who are capable of performing multiple roles, and making sure to bring in those interchangeable parts. But if enough of those players don't exist on the roster, you can't attempt the type of defense Belichick and Flores maneuvered during the Super Bowl run. Brable said the goal is to be like the Patriots' defense, but it's easier said than done. I think the easiest answer is, the more they can handle, the more we'll give them. Certain players can handle a lot, therefore, they have different jobs, different responsibilities. They can change things each week. Some players can't, and that's not fair to those that can't, said Frable. That's not saying they're not good players. It's just that, to move them around, or to ask them to do something that's not in their best interest, wouldn't be helping the team. But then the guys that can handle it, it's very beneficial to have versatile players that can play different positions and understand different concepts and schemes. 
In Tennessee, we're trying to get guys in different spots, play different defenses each week to give us a chance to win, he went on. Sometimes it may look similar, sometimes it might change up. Whatever the players can handle, that's what we try to put on their plate. Some coaches just go with what they know, or what they're comfortable with, and stick with that. They acquire the personnel for their system, and that's what it is for 16 games, and beyond. The Chargers came in with the same cover 3 scheme that Brady's torched for years, didn't change a thing, and got torched once again. That's where you have to challenge yourself as a coach, said Vrabel. To understand all the multiple schemes and coverages so you can teach it, and teach it effectively each week Belichick's got that down. Now Greg Schiano, who is being brought in as the likely defensive coordinator with Flores taking over in Miami, will have to follow his lead. Easterby's time was special to many Pats Jack Easterby will be missed. The Patriots character coach, the latest to depart from the Patriots, was an important behind-the-scenes member of the staff. January 29, 2019 Atlanta, Georgia, New England Patriots character coach Jack Easterby discusses his work with Pats. Herald photo by Kevin Duffy He had the respect of the players. He was an advisor, a Christian preacher, and a sounding board, who was there to help the players become better men. He could also be seen on game days helping warm up the players, playing catch. He was a former college basketball player. Having done a story about him not too long ago, it's pretty obvious what he meant to the players. For me, I'd say he's just a leader of men. Not necessarily lining up on a football field, or getting you to do the right thing on a certain play call, but trying to help you be a man, and live life a certain way, to live the right way. He's been huge for me, Devin McCourty said for the piece. He has a great relationship with a lot of guys on the team. He's just a good friend, a good friend you can count on and talk to, Matthew Slater was also highly complimentary. Obviously, Jack's main mission here is faith-based and faith-oriented. But I think Jack has been able to establish a lot of relationships with guys, in building their lives as men, Slater said. A lot of times, I think that's something that's overlooked in the NFL. It's so performance-based, you lose sight of what's going on in life. I think Jack's value here, you can't put it into its proper place. His value is huge, he's built into the lives of so many guys. His time here has been very special to me personally, and I think to a lot of guys here, there is some expectation Easterby might land in Miami given his strong ties with Brian Flores. New overtime rule proposal? Chiefs general manager Brett Beach told PFT Live that his head coach Andy Reid was working on a proposal to change the overtime rules to ensure each team would get an offensive possession. Kansas City Chiefs head coach Andy Reid talks to the media after a workout Friday, January 18, 2019, in Kansas City, Missouri. The Chiefs host the New England Patriots in the NFL SAFC Football Championship game on Sunday. AP photo, Charlie Riedel, that shouldn't come as a surprise after what happened in the AFC Championship game with the Patriots winning the toss, Tom Brady marching the team down the field and into the end zone, with Patrick Mahomes stuck on the sidelines, not getting a chance. Reed was asked about the overtime rules, and if he wanted to change them during his press session during the scouting combine. He didn't tip his hand about making a new proposal. They're talking about the rules. And we'll see how all that rolls. We all have our opinions. We'll just see how it goes. The league makes the right decision, he said. They've got to listen to a lot of voices coming at them from various angles. But they're aware of it and looking at things, is three company in San Fran? John Lynch has a log jam at quarterback with Jimmy Garoppolo returning from ACL surgery, and two capable backups in Nick Mullins and CJ. Beat hard. Mullins and Beat hard are young, promising quarterbacks. Lynch was asked if he would be open to moving one of the group. Another trade with the Patriots, perhaps? Well, I think we never closed the door on anything. 
but, we really like the three quarterbacks that we have, he said, during his media session at the Scouting Combine. It is an extremely important position in this league and we like each and every one of those guys for what they bring to the table, both in their talent and who they are as people. We're big believers in all of them. Traditionally, we've been of the belief that you keep two because it allows you to do things with your roster. But, never close the door on keeping three, either. I think they're all talented players who like I said are good people, are good leaders and we're big fans of all of them.